After we saw how system user can be used and how system user works, the next element we should talk about are the permission groups. Permission groups are stored in a table that is called dialog group. Remember in Identity Manager all tables starting with dialog have something to do with the Identity Manager configuration and so it is not really wondering us that permission groups are exactly the elements being responsible for getting permissions in Identity Manager. If I like to understand which dependencies exist between, for example, the permission group table, which is dialog group, and all the other objects in the identity manager, in a way of that I'm interested in what objects could be assigned and to which objects I can assign permission groups, then I can use SQL or I can use, for example, designer to figure that out. The idea behind that is that I get a list, like you can see here on the screen, that allows me then to take notice of all of these objects which are assignable and then should be considered. In this very first step, I like to show you how I will get this information and then we will talk about it. To get the information what is connected to permission groups, I use designer. Here we are. In designer, I select the permission section and in the permission section, I just click here on permission groups. I get the list editor that shows me here on the right side, all the particular permission groups that exist in the system. I should or can select just one of these groups if I like to. And the next step here is to show me at the end, the references of a permission group to other tables. It is independent which objects I select because the references are always the same. And to see the references, I have to click here in the property grid, which is to be seen here, just on that specific icon that says object relations. And doing so, I can see now the object relations. That means the relations from that type of objects to other objects, and I can start to interpret them. As you can easily see, if I just select some other groups, the only thing that changes is the amount of related objects that is to be seen on the right column. But this works as well with all other object types, if I like, because the functionality is a feature that is implemented for property grids like this. If you like to do something similar with other object types, as mentioned, then you have to use always a place where such grids are displayed. For example, if I step to system users and select one of these system users, I can do the same for system users. Here we are, it's just one relation. Or you can use the object browser and in object browser there are many grids and that should allow you at the end to see these references nearly to each class of objects. Back to my permission groups. Here we are, I select the icon and now we can discuss the list. First of all, the entry dialog column group right via the column UID dialog group. And this is pretty clear. Here we are talking about column permissions you can set in Identity Manager. Dialog group collection UID dialog group and dialog group collection UID group parent. It's a specific table that allows you to build up a structure between nested dialog groups. That means we know dialog groups could be nested and this shows you always the parent and child for each of these groups so that you can easily build up structures. Dialog group has feature is a way to assign features to a dialog group. Features are something, for example, like in job queue info, where you are able to press control delete to delete jobs out of the job queue, what you better should not do, or something like that. Dialog group has method is something where you can assign tasks to your permission group. Tasks is the stuff you see, for example, in the manager where you can store reports or you can enable specific containers or something else. Once a task is behind that, this task could be assigned or could be removed. Then you will find that in that specific table. Dialog group has sheet. It's a way just to assign forms. Dialog group has tree. It's a way to assign filter and, uh, and dialog objects. That means you are able as well to add filters and dialog parts to permission groups. And at the end, dialog group in group, it's the real nesting. That means to nest one permission group into another. And dialog group table rights, it's the similar thing to dialog column rights, but this time we are talking about table permissions. Dialog user in group at the end says that we are able to assign this specific permission group to a system user, which is the dialog user. 
QBM group has limited SQL is the last thing you can assign. And here we are talking about specific SQL procedures as well, uh, permitted via a permission group. At the end, all together in a graphical display is exactly that what you can see here on the screen on that specific slide. On the slide, you see in the middle the permission group. The permission group itself is an object that could be assigned to system users, this is pretty clear, but it could be as well assigned to application roles. Remember what we have learned in the authentication module section of this video series? It is possible to sign in role-based, therefore you need the application roles. If you do something other else, it's very often that you have to use the system user. Both it's possible. You can assign these objects to system users and application roles. In addition to all of that, it is as well possible to assign a permission group to another permission group. To nest these permission groups, it's an easy way to cluster them together, to inherit permissions and to ensure that, for example, a complete set of permission groups can be assigned to one application role. On the right hand side of that slide, in green, you see the particular entitlements you can assign to that specific permission groups. For example, table and column permissions can be assigned to that specific group. Program functions can as well be assigned to that specific group. You will find as well permissions for, to use API functions and forms and menu items. And as well SQL functions or to be allowed to use them could be part of these entitlements who can be assigned to these permission groups. We will show you later on in detail what you can assign. With that, the permission group is the only element in the identity manager where you can assign entitlements for. The only question is in which way this permission group then gets at the end assigned to an identity, maybe using a system user or as we know in the meantime an application role. 